Avery was hilarious, first of all. She was this little spunky thing. Darling and just full of energy. Sassy. She's fashionista, just a silly, rambunctious uh, fashionista. She had just tons of personality. She always had matching earrings, headbands, accessories. She liked costumes of all kinds, pink sparkles, uh, headbands, tights and leggings, leopard print. She's funny. She's very funny. Yeah. Every picture, she would have her hands on her hip and her head tilted like this. She kind of liked to be the ham. She'd kiss her muscles, she'd do thumbs up, she'd do silly like, ah, you know, smiles. That was just Avery's little spunk. That was her showing, she knew she was strong. Toughest kid I've ever been around. Toughest person I've ever been around. She was just an absolute fierce, brave, strong, courageous warrior. She came in and her body was failing her even when we started school, but she wanted to do everything we did. And she tried and was very determined. She was funny, energetic, stubborn, but she was also the friendliest to others, probably our sweetest of our four kids. She was a very genuinely loving, compassionate person. She just had like this sweet, sensitive heart and spirit. She was more concerned with other people than she was about herself. About three days before her diagnosis, I got a text from Amanda saying that, hey, I think Avery's got a cross, is developing a cross eye. We were looking at rocks and she said she saw two of me. So I was thinking she crossed her eyes or something. And she wasn't, so I thought it was a little weird. That was really our first initial sign uh, that something was going on. And so we pushed to get her in to see a pediatric ophthalmologist. Um, and those appointments usually are like six weeks out, but this, I just had this mothering instinct that something wasn't quite accurate and you know, I wanted to get her in sooner. Mama Bear said, I'm not waiting two weeks. The next day, she pushed to get her in for an MRI. We went in for the MRI. They told us it'd be another two weeks till we got the results. Again, I'm sitting in the MRI room with Avery. Nana's on the phone getting the MRI read that day. That's when they gave us the news. Avery's in the room and they're, they're sitting you down to tell you what this is. It was horrible. So it's a tumor. Okay, so it's cancerous. All right, when is surgery? And then that's when we were given probably the worst news of all, that there is no surgery. In fact, there's nothing that can be done for this particular tumor. There was a little bit of silence and then eventually I said, how long are we looking? We were given a very short window at that point, and that's when it really finally hit, like, this is serious, this is real. I just remember almost collapsing, um, screaming. My legs weakened, my heart started pounding, I started sweating, my mouth went dry, I had to sit down, I ended up laying on the floor. My parents came back from the hospital, and they told us that we didn't have much time. They couldn't do anything about it and that she wasn't going to make it. Officially, it's known as diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, which is a inoperable brain tumor. It's on the pons uh, that essentially controls the nervous system in the body. Uh, it is probably the worst of the worst when it comes to anything, really, uh, when it comes to cancer. When they first said DIPG, we didn't know what that was. Never heard of that. And now I know more about DIPG than I ever wanted to. Typically diagnosed on children between the ages of five and nine, and there's about 200 cases nationally, roughly 300 internationally a year and the survival rate doesn't exist. It was hard emotionally. I definitely pushed it to the back of my mind a lot and just dealt, Avery's here now and we're gonna do everything we can for her now. 
Oh, that was heart-wrenching to hear the news that your daughter's best friend was sick and to know that your friends were gonna potentially lose their daughter. I just went through an array of emotions, you know, shock, disbelief, anger. Like I said, it's bad for anybody, but she's this sweet, kind little girl with the best heart, and it was just gut-wrenching. Avery required a lot of care and uh, physical care and emotional care, and so I think it was really hard to um, just meet everyone's needs. We felt like they cared way less about us because we were always just going to someone else's house and I never got to see what she was actually doing because I didn't know what radiation was at the time. So that was really hard, I think, on the kids to really understand. And then there was a lot of worry and fear about what was coming. How are you going to explain that to your own children? You know, you don't want to put the fear in them because there's always, there's always hope and there's always a possibility that maybe Avery would have been the one to survive. I remember just standing in our hallway um, with Brandon and Avery came up and she was more concerned about like how we were feeling and then worried about herself. A courageous girl battling a severe type of cancer. A six-year-old girl from Auburn is in the fight of her life. You've been a big supporter of Avery Huffman battling DIPG, our colleague Brandon Huffman's daughter. You've seen that his daughter was diagnosed with a, a non-curable brain tumor last summer and she's still in the fight for her life. The way our community responded in those first real 72 hours especially, but since that point was just incredible. People that we didn't even really know at first took it up as a cause to say, hey, we gotta help this family. This was my innocent championship game jersey from, from this year. So what we're doing here is we're gonna auction this off right now. We just have a great circle of support and community. Our community is so giving. People are coming out of the woodwork, you know, to do what they could do. Players that were announcing their college decision on national television were getting embroidered hats that said bravery on it. They were wearing gear that said Avery Strong. When I would be at Safeway and Federal Way, and I would see somebody in an Avery Strong t-shirt, or as people would stop you, I mean, it was, it was just gave you goosebumps. Just overwhelming from the football community. The Doug Baldwin thing was really cool because I've never really, we've never really met a Seahawk player. So we knew we were having a Seahawk assembly of some sort, so we're all decked out in our Hawk gear. We saw the Seahawk. Then Doug Baldwin was in there. So Doug walked over to her and they traded bracelets. And then like the whole gym erupted into cheering for Avery. It takes your breath away. I mean that these young beings, you know, are so compassionate for each other. The biggest takeaway from everything was really just how blown away we were with how many people friends and strangers alike that really just wanted to love us through like the greatest tragedy we could ever be facing. At that point, a six-year-old who'd only been in the elementary school for a year to rally a community together that quickly, it was incredible. What drives us and what pushes us and what's made us really want to, the force behind this foundation is Avery. Really the big thing is spreading the awareness of the severe lack of funding for pediatric cancers in general. A lot of people don't realize that there's a disease that your child could get, but there's nothing they could do. Because when you're given a diagnosis of DIPG and then you're given the prognosis that it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, it tells you where it falls in the priority pool. We're honored to turn our grief to something positive so that other families don't have to feel this. They will hear, thanks to the advancements in medicine and the funding and the awareness of this disease, we finally have found something that something can be done. The only way they're gonna to get to that point of hearing we can do something is for families and foundations like ours to make it our mission, to make it our cause, to champion the importance of raising money and raising awareness to find that cure. We are Avery Strong.